now we will discuss about interior of right atrium actually if you observe the external surface of heart it is very smooth and shiny because it is covered by visceral layer of pericardium and it looks very shiny but if you cut and see the interior it is very rough it contains so many muscular ridges and bridges right for explanation of any part of the interior of heart we have to make section and we have to see interior right for that i will take the right atrium section like this and i will open it right before that i will tell you some general points regarding right atrium actually right atrium gives contribution for the sternocostal surface and base right and it is opened by superior vena cava and inferior vena cava right and which contains projection here what is this conical shaped halo projection ear shaped projection ear like projection this projection what we are calling auricle of course left auricle is this and this is right auricle clear and what is the applied importance here actually in this part there is a chance of lodging of or trapping of clots right so when these clots dislodge from here blood from here where it will go it will go to lungs so which leads to pulmonary embolism pulmonary embolism right so that is about general consideration now we will see the interior of right atrium interior of right atrium for that i need some space here that's what i am removing so how we have to cut we have to make section like this i am drawing dotted lines no along these lines we have to make section and you have to flip like this right so imagine i made a section and i am flipping like this i am flipping so is it so when you do that when you reflect this this part can we see no so i am removing this right now when you see the interior here you can see the opening of opening of superior vena cava superior vena cava opening you can see here and here you can see the inferior vena cava opening right then you can see one smooth muscular ridge we have already discussed sulcus terminalis represents the inside crista terminalis so here you can see crista terminalis actually crista terminalis will be like this so this is crista terminalis it's a muscular ridge so this is crista terminalis right from the crista terminalis so many muscular ridges directing forwards downwards and towards the atrioventricular orifice this is atrium this is ventricle so here orifice is there atrioventricular orifice these are projecting towards this orifice right so they will be like this these are muscular ridges directing forwards downwards and towards the atrioventricular orifice right what are these these are muscule pectinata what is this structure first crista terminalis this is crista 
terminalis right and what are these muscular ridges these are muscule muscule pectinata muscule pectinata right then anything else we can see here yes here you can see one saucer shaped depression saucer shaped depression saucer shaped depression this saucer shaped depression what we call fossa ovalis what is this this is fossa ovalis you can see right and this inferior vena cava contains one wall that means this inferior vena cava guarded by wall that wall what we are calling east asian wall east asian wall actually this is semi lunar shaped wall this wall what we are calling east asian wall right then here you can see one more structure or one more opening that opening what we are calling coronary sinus this coronary sinus also guarded by wall this wall what we are calling tabation wall just i am drawing all the structures after that i will explain don't worry right so here there is opening of coronary sinus then here one muscular band will be there this muscular band what we are calling tendon of todaro tendon of todaro right then in this atrium there will be opening of small small veins so that you can observe small small holes small small holes right clear then here you can see one bulging because of aortic sinus aortic sinus means in the proximal part of aorta there will be small dilatation that dilatation what we are calling aortic sinus because of that aortic sinus here you can see one bulge bulge this bulge what we are calling torus aorticus torus aorticus torus aorticus torus aorticus clear so these are the structures you can see in the right atrium this is very important essay question try to concentrate see right atrium we have to describe under three headings anterior rough surface anterior rough surface posterior smooth surface and inter atrial septum these three headings right first if you take the anterior rough surface anterior rough surface which contains ridge what is this ridge crista terminalis right crista terminalis from the crista terminalis so many muscular ridges and bridges directing forwards downwards and towards the atrioventricular orifice here atrioventricular orifice will be there is it or not or should i draw see here this is the area of atrioventricular orifice this is the orifice which communicates the right atrium with the right ventricle right so this is orifice so these fibers are directing towards this orifice clear so because of this crista terminalis and muscle pectinata anterior surface is very rough and it is developed from the primitive atrium primitive atrium that's what this is atrium proper clear and 
important point i already told you this auricle also developed from the primitive atrium that's what which contains so many muscular ridges and bridges because of that only there is a chance of larging of clots right so if the clots are dislodged from there they will enter into pulmonary circulation which leads to pulmonary embolism right then so that is about anterior rough surface nothing more about it then posterior smooth surface posterior smooth surface having superior vena cava opening inferior vena cava opening right then small small veins vena cardae minimi vena cardae minimi then opening of coronary sinus triangle of coach right and torus aorticus these are the structures which are present in the smooth surface and you have to remember also clear so i will tell one by one superiorly superior vena cava opening just below the superior vena cava opening you can found one small muscular projection muscular ridge that what we are calling intervenous tubercle what is this intervenous tubercle this intervenous tubercle is more prominent in case of animals but in case of humans it is rudimentary you cannot see properly this is right and one more thing but it naked eye you cannot see just below and behind the opening of superior vena cava just below and behind the opening of superior vena cava you can found you can found what is that sa node you can found sa node clear then after that small small veins are there they are directly opening actually most of the veins they opens into coronary sinus coronary sinus will opens into right atrium most of the veins means what veins of heart opens into coronary sinus first coronary sinus drains into heart that means right atrium but few veins few small small veins they directly opens into atrium those are vena cardae minimi very simple vena means what veins cardae means what heart minima means what small vena cardae minimi vena cardae minimi small small veins opens into heart that's it these veins we can also called as tabesian veins tabesian tabesian veins tabesian veins right so that is about that then inferior vena cava opening guarded by one wall that wall what we call eustachian wall eustachian wall actually this eustachian wall is semi lunar in shape half moon shape so that it is having two horns this is right horn and this is left horn right horn continues with the crista terminalis left horn continues with the anterior margin of limbus fossa ovalis don't worry i will tell you what is limbus fossa ovalis anteriorly it is continues with the anterior limb of limbus fossa ovalis so this is semi lunar wall this semi lunar wall is eustachian wall right sometimes within this semi lunar wall so you can see some perforations cribriform cribriform is so many pores right sometimes it will be absent also right now what is the function of it in adult no function but during fetal life this wall directs the blood from the inferior vena cava to left atrium through the foramen ovale right so it helps in the fetal circulation remember that clear then that is about 
inferior vena cava opening and its valve clear actually i told you it is similar in shape this is the base this base will be attaching to the anterior margin of the inferior vena cava opening and this free margin is there now that free margin will be projecting towards the atria clear then here what is this coronary sinus it is vein of heart it is vein of heart this vein of heart also guarded by valve see this this valve what we are calling tebaceous valve tebaceous valve don't confuse with tebaceous veins with tebaceous valve tebaceous veins is small small veins tebaceous valve means valve which is present in the coronary sinus what is the function of it it prevents the regurgitation of blood from the right atrium into the coronary sinus again actually coronary sinus carries the venous blood from the heart into the right atrium but the right atrium contains too much amount of blood is it so that blood should not enter into the coronary sinus again back so which prevents the back flow clear that is about coronary sinus above the coronary sinus here you can found one triangle this triangle what we are calling triangle of coach triangle of coach what is this what is the triangle of coach it is a triangular area present below the tendon of todaro and bounded anteriorly by septal leaflet of atrioventricular orifice base of septal leaflet actually i already told you this is atrioventricular orifice this atrioventricular orifice having anterior wall just imagine we have removed the wall and we are seeing from inside this is anterior cusp and here posterior cusp and here septal cusp three cusps will be there just imagine this is septal cusp and this is the base of the septal cusp this is anterior cusp posterior cusp and this is septal cusp clear so it is bounded this triangular area bounded anteriorly by base of septal cusp posteriorly by anterior and medial margin of what is this coronary sinus anterior and medial margin of coronary sinus and superiorly by tendon of todaro superiorly by tendon of todaro so this area is triangular area what is the importance of this why i am stressing more about it which contains av node what is av node atrioventricular node right atrioventricular node it is one of the component of conducting system sa node av node bundle of his parkinson fibers these are conducting system parts clear so that is the importance of triangle of coach right so these are the important features of posterior surface then what about the another one inter atrial septum inter atrial septum right so this is only inter atrial septum here saucer shaped depression saucer shaped depression this saucer shaped depression what we call fossa ovalis fossa ovalis fossa ovalis right this fossa ovalis is embryological remnant of fossa ovalis is embryological remnant of septum primum septum primum this is fossa ovalis this fossa ovalis is embryological remnant of septum primum and this fossa ovalis margined by margined by that means along the fossa ovalis you can see one margin just imagine this is fossa along the fossa you can see the margin this margin what you are calling limbus fossa ovalis 
or annulus fossa ovalis. Limbus fossa ovalis or annulus fossa ovalis. Limbus fossa ovalis or annulus fossa ovalis. Annulus fossa ovalis. Clear? Annulus fossa ovalis is embryological remnant of septum secundum. Septum secundum. Clear? So, this is about inter atrial septum. Clear? Now, we will conclude and we will make it simple within 5 minutes. And I will tell you some embryological origin also. If you know the embryology of heart, well and good. If you do not know also, do not worry. I will tell you how to write interior of right atrium. Within 5 minutes, I will finish it. Interior of right atrium. You have to draw this diagram. If you cannot draw this much diagram, at least you can draw this small part and you have to start writing. Interior of right atrium contains three parts anterior rough part, posterior smooth part, and inter atrial septum. Right? First, if you take the anterior rough part or atrium proper, it is very rough because of muscular ridges and bridges, which contains smooth vertical ridge, this ridge what we call crista terminalis. It is embryologically derived from upper part of right venous wall. Right? From this ridge, so many muscular ridges and bridges directing downwards, forwards and towards the atrioventricular orifice. These bridges what we are calling musculae pectinata. Clear? So, up to that you have to write. Then if you want to extend little more, small conical shape projection from the right atrium that what you call right auricle. This right auricle also contains network of muscular ridges. In this area, there is a chance of lodging of clots. Right? If these clots dislodge from here, there is a chance of pulmonary embolism. Clear? So, that is about anterior rough part. Then posterior smooth part. Posterior smooth part contains superior vena caval opening in the upper part and just below the opening you can see the intervenous tubercle. Intervenous tubercle. It is rudimentary in case of humans, it is prominent in case of animals. Right? Then just below and posterior to the opening there will be SA node. Right? Then you can see the so many small small veins which are opening into the right atrium directly. And you can see the foramina. These foramina what we call foramina vena minimarum. Foramina vena minimarum. Otherwise, just simply vena cardae minimi. Vena cardae minimi. Right? So, these veins what we can call Tabasian veins. They are directly opening into the right atrium. Clear? Then, inferior vena caval opening. This inferior vena caval opening guarded by wall. This wall is semilunar in shape. It is having two halves, right and left horn. Right horn continues with the crista terminalis. Left horn continues with the limbus fossa ovalis. This wall is embryological remnant of lower part of right venous wall. Clear? Then this wall in embryological life helpful for the directing the blood from the inferior vena cava to left atrium through the foramen oval. Then coronary sinus. Coronary sinus guarded by semilunar wall which prevents the regurgitation of blood into the coronary sinus. Right? Then triangle of coach. Triangle of coach it is bounded anteriorly by base of the septal leaflet behind by anterior and medial margin of coronary sinus above by tendon of todaro 
the within this triangle we can call a v node clear that's it about smooth posterior part then interatrial septum this interatrial septum contains one fossa that fossa what we call fossa ovalis this fossa ovalis margined by limbus fossa ovalis or annulus fossa ovalis fossa ovalis is embryological remnant of septum prima limbus fossa ovalis is embryological remnant of septum secundum right sometimes there will be gap in between the septum primum and septum secundum that means just below the limbus fossa ovalis we can see the small foramen this foramen what we are calling propatency of foramen ovale propatency propatency prop patency propatency of foramen ovale actually 25% of the people is having the propatency of foramen ovale without any symptoms it is anatomically foramen will be there but physiologically it is closed no blood passing from right to left left to right clear along with these points if you write embryological derivation of different parts of the right atrium it will be well appreciated so what you have to write posterior smooth part embryologically derived from the absorbed part of right horn of sinus venosum absorbed part of right horn of sinus venosum that's what this smooth posterior part we can also call as sinus venarum sinus venarum clear then anterior rough part embryologically derived from the primitive atrium which part of the primitive atrium right part of the primitive atrium clear then what is this crista terminalis crista terminalis embryologically derived from the upper part of right venous wall upper part of right venous wall then eustachian wall or valve of inferior vena cava this valve of inferior vena cava embryologically derived from the lower part of right venous wall right clear then interatrial septum interatrial septum developed from the both septum primum and septum secundum septum primum forms the fossa ovalis that means fossa ovalis embryologically derived from the septum primum septum secundum forms the limbus fossa ovalis that means limbus fossa ovalis embryologically derived from the septum secundum clear so these things you have to write clear so that's it about write it